Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimpy Camper. Welcome to this week's episode. In this week's episode of the Gimpy Camper, we're taking you to the Lake of Dreams campground in Merrill, Michigan. That's near Midland, Michigan or Saginaw. And we went there for the M22. It was a great time. And I'm gonna tell you all about that campground right after this. All right, so we were here for the M22 meetup. It's at the end of September every year, and it's hosted by Kevin with Where RV Staying. I'm gonna link his channel down in the description, as well as the page for the meetup. We took this opportunity to visit family in Northern Michigan, and then swung by for the meetup on the way back home. I highly recommend that you guys attend some meetups. If you haven't, you know, you don't have to be a channel to, to go to a meetup most of the time. We love having supporters there and just people that, that like to watch our content. We had a great time at the meetup. We just thought we'd do a review on the Lake of Dreams campground. I will start by saying you may want to manually enter the address because when we punched it into the Garmin, the Garmin led me astray for the second or third time since I've had it. And it took us to the middle of a cornfield that was 13 miles away from the campground. And apparently this happens pretty often. I will list the uh, address of the campground in the description below too. So you can just pull that from there if you want to. Let's start with some general information about the campground. This campground is 253 campsites on 77 acres. I will say that although there are a huge number of sites here, it doesn't feel like that big of a park. I will say that the campsites are pretty large in size and are mostly flat. In the front loop where we were located, there is a little bit of shade, but not a whole lot of tree cover. This loop is pretty close to the large lake that the campground centered around. The rates are very reasonable here at $35 a night, $210 a week, or $500 a month. Now these prices were taken from their website in September of 2022. Their website's www.lakeofdreamscampground.com. They also have a couple of cabins available. Most of the seasonal sites are in the back loops where there's more cover and more mature trees. This area is very nice as it's reminiscent of actually camping in the woods, but the sites are still pretty decently sized. Apparently their new sites are even larger because they, they know that people are getting larger and larger RVs these days. Okay, so let's talk about cell speeds at the campground. Cell speeds actually seem to be pretty strong here, which it is pretty close to a big city there in Saginaw, so you would expect that. However, our Verizon phone only got nine up and nine down, which is still pretty usable. But our first net phone got five up and 49 down. But where the magic happens is when you compare the first net phone with the AT&T first net that I have on the cellular router as part of the InstiConnect system with the rooftop antenna. Now I only have the omnidirectional antenna there. I don't have the binoculars antenna, the directional antenna that actually looks for the signal. But whenever we looked at our speed with the InstiConnect, I was able to get, it was still only six up, but it was a blistering 91 download, which, you know, isn't the fastest in the world, but it's, it's pretty, pretty quick and it doubled about the speed that we got without it. So again, I'm a fan of that system. There is a link to the video down in the description about our Instant Connect system. There's also an affiliate link down there. So you can check it out if, you, if you're interested in buying one. All right, so let's talk about amenities here at the campground. There are actually quite a few amenities here at the campground. There are two private lakes that apparently do allow catch and release fishing. So that's pretty neat. Apparently in the summer, the larger lake does have a water park with two large inflatables. There is a nice sandy beach area. The smaller lake is on the back side of the campground. And I was told that a lot of these campsites are available for weekends. So um, that's pretty nice. That's actually some of my favorite spots and we'll get into that in a minute. There are some volleyball nets as well as a small basketball court with a concrete pad. Now the concrete pad is pretty small, I'm gonna tell you that, but I thought it was a nice to just, you know, have a little bit of concrete there for you to play basketball. And concrete is not the cheapest thing in the world. So it does mean a lot that they took the extra mile and, and tried to do what they could there. There are also a couple of playgrounds scattered around the campground. Now I'll talk about the bathrooms. They're nice and clean. There are also some private shower stalls in the bathhouse. The showers are very clean as well. All of the internal walls in the bathhouse are lined with roofing metal, which I've never seen before, but I think that this was just a great idea. It has a nice clean look, but it's easy to keep clean and it just looks good in my opinion. I also wanted to point out 
on the campground website, they list campground activities as well, such as 70s and 80s week, Pirates weekend, and Halloween haunted trails. Now this is where we usually get into talking about the negative aspects of campgrounds. Now I have to say that there just aren't many negative aspects of this campground that I've come across on my couple of days here. I think that a lot of people may see the grass lots in the front loop as a negative, but I actually like these sites. They're all close to the lake and they're pretty level. I didn't even have to use any leveling blocks or anything when I got to my site. The sod was tightly packed and we didn't have any issues with mud or water at the site at all. Most of the sites here are 30 amp sites, but I believe they do have a few 50 amp sites. I think that all those 50 amp sites are probably seasonal though, I'm not sure about that. There are also a couple of dump stations here. I don't think any of the seasonal sites have sewer, but I'm not real sure about that one. You'd have to ask the campground. So let's talk about our preferred sites. I actually didn't see any sites that I would avoid at the park here. They all seem to be nice, usable sites with plenty of space. The area that I would prefer myself were the sites along the back road across from the small fishing pond. I liked that these had a pretty view, but they still had some tree cover. That being said, I have no problems with staying in the front loop. I would think that the front loop's more popular in the summertime when the water park's open. These sites, while being grass, still all seem to have a decent amount of space at the campsite. For me, that's the most important thing is having space. I hate feeling so close to my neighbor that I can guess what they had to eat for dinner the night before by smelling them fart in their own camper. Yep, I think that was Taco Bell. You get the point. We didn't venture out of the campground much as we were here to spend some time with friends, but it didn't appear that there was a whole lot to do in the area surrounding the campground within the next few miles. But sometimes that can be a good thing. You know, you just want to hang out with friends at the campground. For more information about the M23 for next year, yes, the number changes by the year. Be sure to follow Kevin's YouTube channel, Where RV Staying, or the Facebook group. They're also making a website specific for the Michigan meetup as well. And whenever I get all that information, I'll have it down in the description. So guys, that's really all I have to say about the Lake of Dreams campground. It was a nice day. I enjoyed it. It's pretty centrally located there in Michigan. And if you're going to the Saginaw area and you're looking for somewhere to stay, I highly recommend it. They do close in October, and I'm not sure when they open back up for the year. But obviously in Michigan, you got a lot of snow and stuff to deal with. I'll also say there's a channel called Camp Maintenance Guy. It's uh, the maintenance guy that's there at that campground. And he has a channel where he just you know shares random things. Check his channel out. So thanks for joining us for this week's video. We'll uh, be back with you for next week's adventure. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.